If you're new to Australia, specifically Sydney, I'm hoping this video will be really helpful for you because it's the type of video I wish I saw 10 years ago when I moved here. So I wanted to create this video just to collate all the different popular apps and websites that's used here in Sydney for various different things. Let's get into the first one. So when it comes to travel and navigation, the very first app to download is the Opal app. This is the travel card that you use on ferries, buses, trains and trams, or what they call light rail in Sydney. And it basically logs every single journey. It's the best way to manage and see all the travel. And you can also link your credit card to the Opal app. So instead of having to use your Opal card for public transport, you can just use your credit card, which is what I do. Another one is TripView. This is a really popular app in Sydney if you want to get around and you want to know the times of the next train. It provides real-time public transport schedules and it's good for planning routes as well. I use TripView all the time when I'm about to catch a train going into the city. It's also a really good way to know if there's any maintenance work going on and where buses are going to be replacing the trains. And if you want any other information regarding travel, then the best website to go on is New South Wales Transport Info. Two of the most popular supermarkets in Australia is Woolworths and Coles. And I find that quite nostalgic because we used to have a Woolworths in the UK and I remember getting pick and mix sweets and you could buy clothing and games from there. You could buy all sorts of stuff from Woolworths, which we called Woolies, but here it's a supermarket. I tend to shop at Woolworths because it's closer to me. You tend to find a good range at Woolies. I'd say if you had to compare it to the UK, Woolworths is similar to Sainsbury's and Coles is probably similar to Azure or Tesco. Just to give you an idea, when it comes to loyalty cards, with Woolworths, I download the rewards app and that way you can collect points every time you spend and you can get $10 off here or there and you can also get free coffee after spending $30 in one transaction. And with Coles, you download the Flybys app. There's also a third supermarket that's quite popular. I don't tend to go there because I find it a little bit more expensive, but it's called IGA, which stands for Independent Grocers of Australia. I believe there is an app for it, but I've chosen not to download it because I just never tend to shop there. These next two apps people will find very useful when it comes to looking for rental apartments and housing or even if you want to purchase. But the main app that I use is Real Estate. Real Estate is the app that I use when I was looking for a rental apartment and even the rental apartment that I'm living in right now. And another popular app is Domain. It's similar to Rightmove or Zoopla that's in the UK but focuses on the Australian market. So in Australia, there's four top banks. There's Commonwealth Bank of Australia, there's Westpac Banking Corporation, ANZ, which is Australian New Zealand Banking Group, and NAB, which stands for National Australia Bank. So between CBA, Westpac, ANZ and NAB. CBA is probably the biggest and the most popular. And currently it's the bank that I prefer and have most of my accounts with. They offer good rates, they provide good service. But when I migrated over to Australia from the UK, I wanted a bank account that I could open from the UK and I went with Westpac. I was advised to use Westpac and the whole process was quite smooth. Westpac is actually one of Australia's oldest banks. ANZ is one that exists here in Australia and New Zealand. And NAB is another leading bank in Australia offering competitive rates and products. ING does exist here in Australia as well and I consider them to be a good bank too. When it comes to government apps and websites, the first app that you'll need is Service New South Wales. This app is used for a variety of government services. It has your digital driver's license and you can renew it using this app. You can register your vehicles and you can access other government services on there too. MyGov is another app that you will need to download when you're here in Australia. And with this app, you can access services like Medicare, which is the public healthcare service. Another one is Centrelink for government benefits and also the Australian Tax Office, the ATO, when it comes to tax time. And that leads me on to a very helpful website, the ATO. This is the official site for tax related information, including tax returns, GST and superannuation. And superannuation is basically what we call a pension back in the UK but here they call it a superannuation up until the point where you're retired and then I believe it's called a pension when you're actually receiving payments from it. Another useful app is the postal service called OzPost and this is a good app to track your parcels that you've sent or about to be received. You can find nearby post offices using this app, manage deliveries and see different postal rates. 
There's many different comparison sites, but these are the ones I tend to use. And the first one's called CanStar. This is an Australian financial comparison website. It's actually useful for comparing products like insurance, credit cards, and loans. And another handy website is called Product Reviews, which I tend to use. This one has user-generated reviews and ratings for like a wide range of products and services. It basically just has a lot of honest feedback, so it helps me make informed decisions, as it's from like real users, even the ones that complain about stuff. And it covers things like electronics and home goods, beauty products and more. When it comes to reviews, I mostly use Amazon reviews because I find them the most helpful and authentic. Another comparison site is iSelect, and this one's used for like utilities, health insurance and other services. And a common one that a lot of people have heard of is Compare the Market, where you can compare health insurance, car insurance, things like energy providers and more. Now these apps I don't tend to use that often because I don't really get takeaway but the ones that they use here in Australia are called Menulog and Uber Eats which most people have heard of. I'm not going to talk too much about them because I don't really use them but for the people that find it helpful I've included it in this video. For electricity and gas, like utilities and home services, these are the top companies or apps and websites. Origin Energy seems to be a very popular choice and it's the one that I'm with. It's one of Australia's largest energy providers. Another one that's commonly used is AGL and there's also Energy Australia. I had a bad experience with Energy Australia and that's why I don't use them, but it wouldn't be the same for everyone, but I prefer Origin Energy at the moment. There's also another Australian energy provider which I thought is worth mentioning is called Red Energy and their focus is more on renewable energy options. Next, we're going to talk about mobile phone networks and providers. Telstra seems to be the largest and the most popular in Australia. It's also the most expensive as well and has a greater network coverage over all the other ones. Optus is the one that I'm with because it's less expensive than Telstra. Depending on where you live, the network coverage can be noticeably less. I live nearer to the Sydney CBD, the city centre, and it seems to be fine. And the third one is Vodafone. And this one I personally tend to avoid because I think the network coverage tends to drop quite often for the people that do use Vodafone, but that also depends where you live in Sydney. And the last one I like to talk about is entertainment. When it comes to concerts and gigs and shows, here in Australia, they use an app called Tiki Tech. And another one where I've recently just booked tickets for a British artist that's coming to Australia later this year called JP Cooper is Mosh Ticks. And as most people probably heard of, you can also use Ticketmaster here in Australia too. I hope this roundup of apps and websites have been helpful for you. I certainly would have found it very helpful to see this kind of video when I first arrived here. If you want to see more content about Sydney and any ways that I can help, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.